Hi there, Grade 5 IB students, and welcome back again to our online class. Happy Monday to you, and I hope you had a great weekend. So, last week, we have learned how to use area models to multiply a decimal by a decimal, right? Now, you may, you may think that, oh, it's a good strategy, but some of you might, might find it um, time-consuming in drawing area models. Now, is there any strategy where you don't need to draw area models? Yes, there is. And let's find out in this first example. Let's take a look. How can you use properties to multiply decimals? We will not use models anymore, but we will only use properties. Here we go. How can you use properties to multiply decimals? Entries for a poster contest must be five-tenths of a square meter or smaller. Can Jamel enter her poster? Use what you know about decimals and properties to multiply six-tenths times nine-tenths. Step 1. Rewrite the multiplication expression. Six tenths can be written as six times one tenth, and nine tenths can be written as nine times one tenth. Rearrange the factors using the associative and commutative properties. Step two multiply the whole numbers. Multiply the decimals. One tenth times one tenth equals one hundredth. Write the product. Can Jamel enter her poster in? Select your answer. To the contest? 54 hundredths is greater than 5 tenths, so Jamel cannot enter her poster into the contest. Okay, so where are we now? It's over here. All right, so uh, if you can see there a while ago in the video, we didn't use any models, but we have just used the properties. So I have here another example before we go to that guided practice. I have another example here, and uh, let's, let's uh, have a, one more example so that it will really sink in to your brains and you would really understand how to use and uh, how to use the properties and what happened there because so many things happen in that one process so let's take a look in this problem a slice of bread has 1 and 2500 grams of fat so how many grams of fat are in one uh, one and five tenths slices okay in one slice of bread is 125 grams of fat. So we will multiply 1 and 25 hundredths by 1 and 5 tenths. To multiply that, first we are going to break apart the factors. Or not break apart, but factor out. We will factor out or rename each factor like this. So 1 and 25 hundredths can be renamed as 125 times 1 hundredth, right? Right, because that is in 2500, so you multiply that by 100. Then the 1 and 5 tenths will be renamed as 15 times 1 tenth. Correct? So the purpose of this is to just take away the decimal from the numbers. Now, once you get that, you can use commutative property and associative property to rearrange. So we rearrange, uh, to rearrange, we are going to group the whole numbers which are 125 and 15 we have it here and then group the decimals we have the 100th times 1 10th now multiply 125 by 15 you know how to multiply that you will get 
1875 and also multiply the decimals 100th times 1 tenth you will get 1000 okay now so in this point it's very easy for you to multiply uh, the whole number and the decimal right very easy because remember when you're multiplying uh, a whole number and decimal you're going to look at the number of place values in your decimal so in this uh, decimal the number of place values are use red one two and three so if you multiply this is just one multiply it by 1875 it will just be the same but you should have three place values so where will be your decimal point the decimal point will be between one and eight yes so if you are going to take this out the answer will be one and eight hundred seventy five thousands okay now if you're going to take a look uh i have a i have a um a diagram here i have a diagram here this is a hundredths grid and that is four tenths right because there are 40 squares shaded now in this 40 square shaded uh just just think of just think of uh if you are going to convert this into thousands just think that each square is also divided by 10 so 4 tenths or yeah 4 tenths which is equal to 40 hundredths will also be equal to 4000 thousands so this picture shows that one tenth of a hundred is one thousand yeah anyways i hope that will help so anyways so to find uh, the final answer here is there are one thousand uh sorry there are one and eight hundred seventy five thousands grams of fat in one and five ten slices of bread okay i hope you understand that if you don't if you still don't understand go go back and watch the video again Let's go to guided practice. Open your book on page 155. Page 155. Let's start with question 1. Mason is multiplying 3 times 5 times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. What decimal multiplication problem is he solving? Ooh, what do you think is the decimal multiplication here? The easiest way is to re uh the, the easiest way to do this is to rearrange you can rearrange you can partner the three by one tenth right so three times one tenth that is three tenths so actually i show you can do it like this rearrange that will be three times one tenth right and then times rearrange five times one tenth that will be five times one tenth oh what is that equal to? 3 times 1 tenth is equal to 3 tenths. And 5 times 1 tenth that is equal to 5 tenths. That's it. So the decimal multiplication problem is 3 tenths times 5 tenths. <laughs> okay. Number 2. Complete Mason's work to find the product. So let's find the product of this. But be, we will not go back to this anymore. We will we will start from we will start from this work from this part. Okay, we will not go back to this because this is the original one, and then we already have this. Uh, yeah. So we will con continue. Three times five. Let's do like this. Three times five times. Oops, my. There you go. Times. One tenth times one tenth. All right, three times five is how much? That is equal to fifteen. And one tenth times one tenth that is equal to one hundredth. Fifteen times one hundredth is equal to fifteen hundredths. There you go. So therefore, the answer of three uh, three tenths times five tenths is equal to fifteen hundredths. Got it? So now you know how to multiply decimals without even using an area model. 
let's proceed to some more examples here. 3 to 6, use properties to find its product. So we have 3 tenths times 7 tenths. First, we can just uh, rearrange. We will have 7 times 3 times the 3 tenths is a tenths. That's 1 tenth times another tenth. Another tenth. Okay. Why don't we... Anyways. Because we don't have a lot of space here. Oh. Why don't we... Let's go back here. Let's go back. Sorry. This is live. Uh, I will have one page. Can I borrow this page? And put this back. Put this right next to you. Alright. There you go. Oops. Away. So this is our example. 3 tenths times 7 tenths. 3 tenths times 7 tenths. So we will, re uh, we will rename 3 tenths into 3 times 1 tenth times. The 7 tenths we will rename to 7 times 1 tenth. Okay. And then rearrange 3 times 7 times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. Now, 3 times 7 is how much? That is equal to 21 times 1 tenth times 1 tenth is equal to 100. 21 times 100 is equal to 2100. Therefore, the answer here is 7 tenths times 7, uh, 3 tenths times 7 tenths is equal to 2100. That's easy. Let's go to a harder one. This one. 63 hundredths times 2 and 8 tenths. Let me use a different color. 63 hundredths times 2 and... What was that again? 8 tenths. 2 and 8 tenths. Okay. So 63 hundredths can be rewritten as 63 times 1 hundredth. And then 2 and 8 tenths will be rewritten as 28 times 1 tenth. Now, regroup, use, use properties, commutative and associative properties. 63 times 28 times 1 hundredth times 1 tenth. Now, 63 times 28 is equal to... If you're going to multiply that, oops, sorry, what happened there? Okay, 63, where did it go? There you go, I lost my monitor. 63 times 28 is equal to 1,760. Four, and then multiply one hundredth times one tenth. That is equal to one thousand. So one thousand has three decimal places. If you multiply this number, it will become one and seven hundred sixty-four thousands. Okay, so that is the answer. One and seven hundred sixty-four. And that's not that should be a decimal point seven hundred sixty four thousands. All right, number five. Let's proceed to number five. Twenty six. Ah, uh, sorry. Two and six tenths times one and four tenths. Two and six tenths times one and four tenths. Let me clear this out. Two and six tenths times one and four tenths. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Let's re rewrite this. That will be 26 times 1 10 times 14 times 1 10. <clears throat> now regroup 26 times 14, so 14, and then group the decimals 1 10 times 1 10. Now 26 times 14, 26 times 14 is equal to if you multiply these two numbers, that will be equal to 364. If you multiply 1 tenth times 1 tenth, that will be equal to 1... Oops, what happened to my pen? 100th. 
the 100 has two decimal places. So the decimal point will go to between 3 and 6. So the answer here will be 3 and 64 hundredths. So 3 and 64 hundredths. Last one. We use this color, yellow. 4 and 5 tenths times 8 hundredths. 4 and 5 tenths times 8 hundredths. So do the same process. Rename 4 and 5 tenths or into or rewrite 4 and 5 tenths into 45 times 1 tenth times. 8 hundredths will be re rewritten as 8 times 1 hundredth. Then regroup 45 times 8. And then multiply the decimals 1 tenth times 1 hundredth. 45 times 8, that will be equal to 360 times 1 tenth times 1 hundredth is, of course, 1 thousandth. Multiply. 1 thousandth has, has three decimal places, so there should have three decimal places. The decimal point will be on the left of three. So it will be 360 thousandths. So the, prob the, the answer here is equal to... 360 thousands, or you can just say three, uh, 36 tenths, uh, sorry, 36 hundredths. Whew, all right. So those are the, uh, those are the, uh, the answers. Now it's your turn to do it by yourself. It's your turn to do it by yourself. Do, do independent practice number uh, seven up to number 15. If you, all right, where's the, independent practice it's over here okay all right so do it maybe t in 10 minutes and once you're done you can uh you can pause this for a while you can pause this video right and do the independent practice once you're done you resume the video right because i'm going to reveal the answers you pause the video now and the answer is the answer is and here are the answers Ta -da! so check your work you go ahead check your work if you have any uh, mistakes you correct them and if you have any questions you can uh, send me an email or talk to me uh, or, or you I can ask me during our meeting okay All right so I hope that you under you have understood how to use properties in multiplying decimals it's pretty easy right and you don't need to draw you don't need to take time in drawing area models and arrays so yeah where am i where is my face there you go so yeah that's it for today thank you so much for coming i hope that you will have a great day ahead and i'll be wait wait i'll be uh, assigning you a homework so go check it out in your google classroom Find HW2, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, give me a second. Yes, it's, uh, sorry, not HW2, HW5. It will be HW5. Uh, yeah, and please do that as soon as you can. And, and if you still have any missing works, please do them as soon as you can so that you won't have lots and lots of missing works piled up. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for coming and I hope to see you in the near future. Goodbye. God bless you all.